<laughs> hey, yeah, just me sitting in front of my some of my movies here. Yeah, the, as you can see them back there. Yeah, I, I got a big collection. This is only like one shelf full, but anyways. Um, today, I'm going to read you a story. It's not just any story. It is a ghost story. Well, it's it's more than a ghost story. Like it, it's uh, it's called Haunted House Party Massacre. Oh yeah, it's getting real here. And yeah, I'm going to start reading it. So prepare to be amazed. It's quite nonsense though, so just just don't mind that. I'm going to put on my special glasses, ah, and we're going to read now. It was a perfect day on the 4th of July. This one guy named Steve wanted to throw the most epic party of all time. He thought he would throw an even better party than the parties he ever threw in high school. He was at his new house in Regina, Saskatchewan, and he didn't know it was haunted. The first guy arrived. Yo, what's up, bro? Said party dude. Uh, hey, buddy. Nothing much. Just preparing for my really dope party, said Steve. Nice. Hey, I also brought the beers, said party dude. That's that's awesome, said Steve. As the crack of dawn came closer and closer, all the guests have finally arrived. They were having the time of their lives. They were drinking and everything, and everything you would expect people to do at a party. Hey, Steve, this party's the best. This is way better than, than being at work taking care of sick patients, said the horrible nurse. Glad you're having a good time, said, said Steve. But the good times were turning into, were, were starting to turn into strange times, as a girl in a bathroom trying to stash Steve's Pokemon cards collection in her, in her purse. She watches her, she watches as the door closes on its own. She gets more and more frightened as weirder and stranger things are going on around her. She screams in terror. Whoever's doing this, please stop! No, you're going. You're not going to see tomorrow," said the voice. "What are you saying?" asked the bathroom girl. The mysterious entity pushes, punches the mirror, and stabs her with a shard of glass. As she was screaming for help before she was killed, nobody could hear her because they were too busy having a pretty dope time at this awesome party. About two hours after the mysterious entity murdered that Pokemon card loving girl, Party Dude noticed a very foul smell coming from the bathroom. Yo, Steve! It smells like somebody didn't flush and was really sick or something. It stinks! said Party Dude. Party Dude enters the bathroom and sees the bloody corpse laying in the bathtub. He screams and he is suddenly lifted from the ground and is taken into the living room in front of everybody and is thrown into onto deer antlers. Everyone screams and the entity starts killing everybody. A heavy shell falls onto Steve and Steve becomes too weak to move and unfortunately has no choice but to watch everyone die. Horrible, gruesome deaths. Steve passes out. About an hour later, Steve wakes up and hears nothing but music playing. He finally gets out from under the shelf and sees everyone sees nothing but blood all over the floor. Flesh, insides, and dead people were all over the floor too. He then pukes and tells the person responsible to show himself or herself. Hello, Steve. I am a demonic spirit, and I am not just an ordinary one like from the exorcist or the conjuring. You'll see you'll see through the night what kind of demon I am. Screw this, I'm out of here. I'm a, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to say it better. Screw this, I'm out of here. Steve opens the door, and the demon decides that maybe the night isn't such a good idea, but instead cause a massacre at another house. So he kicks. So the spirit pushes him out of outside the door after he opens it and falls into a big house in an attic, and it happened to be and it happened to be in a house in uh, in Los Angeles. Oh yeah. 
Before the family gets home, Steve leaves the house and dresses up as a homeless man so he can stay with the family when they do get home. When he attempts to ask him, they say yes, and he, so, yes, he can stay, and he makes himself at home. Kind of like I'm at home right now. Anyways, but he unknowingly makes the family's house haunted with that demon. The demon ends up speaking to him. Hey, Steve, that teenage girl in this family is throwing her 17th birthday next week. When all of her drunk friends come over, I'm going to possess you and you're going to kill everybody at the party, including the entire family, explained the voice. Just leave me alone, you hear me? asked Steve. Just, just until the time comes, I'm going to haunt this house as a normal ghost would. You know what? I will turn myself into an ordinary ghost, so until then, enjoy your freedom while it lasts, said the voice. Steve later on became more and more concerned about the family, as he knew there was no stopping the evil ghost, until the f and the family only had one more week to live. As night fell, they were all asleep, except for Steve. The ghost went into the girl's bedroom to torment her. She woke up and noticed things moving on their own. Hello? Who's there? There was no answer. She heard nothing but eerie noises in her bedroom. She became scared, and she w went to wake up her parents to tell them that something weird is going on. But they do that cliched thing where they don't believe her. But as the week goes on, the parents notice strange things going on too. The night of the party finally comes. As the week goes on, and the spirit drags Steve outside and possesses him. About two hours after Steve is possessed, he charges into the house, and the first victim is the girl. After he guns her down, he starts killing everyone else. Good job, kid. Now get after the parents, said, said the voice. Steve walks into the kitchen with a chainsaw and kills her parents. About three hours later, everyone at the party is dead. Oh yeah. The party then set... The, the, no, not the party. The Steve then sets Steve free and tells him that he is now the biggest serial killer in all of California. Oh my god, I helped haunt this house and caused a massacre, said Steve. Yes, you did, and now I'm going to kill your entire family, said the voice. Oh, no, you're not. Steve climbs on a mysterious ladder back to his house in Regina, and when he does get there, all the doors and windows lock, and he ends up being tormented and brutalized by the spirit. After an hour of that, the spirit finally shows himself, and then Steve grabs his shotgun, loads it up, and shoots the spirit in the head. And then, that, then a hand grabs its leg and drags it back to hell. Steve then tries to relax, but he hears the sound of sirens outside his front door. He then walks outside with